In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can install PFSense Firewall. Hello and welcome back to my channel. So in this video, we are going to install PFSense Firewall uh, in VMware Virtual Machine. But you can do that on your server, on your cloud or wherever. So on their official website, you can see they provide these services too. But if you want to download the ISO, it's open source free, you can do that. You just need to click on download and then under download page, you will see this version 727, click on download. And then here you will need to select the image, which one you want. So if you're using in a virtual machine, you can see it says uh, ISO for IPMI and virtual machines. You need to select this one. And then it's just showing you this because you have to fill in uh, email address and your name and then you can get the download link and it's not difficult you can do that and it's not going to charge you anything and other than that uh, before installation of uh, the pfSense we need to know what hardware required for uh, pfSense firewall so the CPU is required it should be at least 500 mg which is like very normal and other than that you need 1 gig of RAM so and hard drive should be 8 gigs so i'm going to give it more resources but these are the minimum okay so let's go to vmware and there are a few machines trying to restore from the previous state okay never mind i'm going to create a new machine with the custom settings and then yes and then i'm going to select uh PF sense so you will need to download that I already have it downloaded so I'm just going to select that one PF sense you can see 272 after selecting that you should see free BDS 64 bit detected because it's another version of Linux which is called free BDS so you should be seeing that so that means it is detecting this and next uh, you should type here the name of firewall so it's going to be PF sense and uh, i'm gonna just give it a name like this firewall one so it's because this is going to be the firewall one uh i'll be doing more experiments as well so i'm just renaming it firewall one you can rename uh whatever you want and then i'm going to give it two cores of processors and then next i'm going to give it four gigs of ram uh by default uh, i showed you guys it's uh, one GB of RAM is required, but I'm giving it four and then and the hard drive space is uh, Eight gigs required, but you can choose whatever you want and for this one. I'm going to use uh, The bridged network. So this one is going to be van and then we will uh, add another network Which is going to be LAN to access this firewall for the first time and then next and I'm going to select the recommended one next and this one as well and then create a new virtual disk yes so by default they ask you uh, sorry not by default uh, the recommendation is uh, 8 gigs but you can do whatever you want so I'm just going to give it 50 gigs uh, and then allocate all space now so this will perform very good if you do this but this will take a lot of time creating uh, the disk if you're using the hard drive so I have the hard drive uh, SSD for my operating system so it's going to take more time so that's why I'm just going with the split virtual uh, drive but if you're going to use this in uh, the actual environment make sure you click on this one this will take more time to create the virtual machine but it will be faster while running because it has all the space already for this one it like increases gradually once the uh, space is required so you can see the disk file name is going to be pfsense-fw1.vmdk next and then power on machine i'm gonna say no because i have to make some changes so i'm gonna come here again click on settings and then uh, i'm going to add another interface which is going to be the network interface and then i'm going to set a custom one because we're going to make it lan and we will set things uh how we want so let's say um vmnet4 create a connect 
so connect add power on the time i will uh, click finish and start the machine it will be connected or if the machine is already running if i add this one so that that feature means uh, if your machine is running as well still your network will be on you will not need to reboot your machine okay so now you can see i have two uh, network interfaces uh, one is bridged another one is custom for and then i'm going to click on okay okay and then power on this machine And I'll show you all the steps. It's not going to take more time. So you can just keep it here, like hit enter if you want to uh, boot with it, or it gives you just five seconds to select from uh, all those. But it's okay to not hit anything or just wait five seconds. So it's going to load a couple files and then it's going to ask for, I guess, uh, I don't remember the last time I installed it, but for licenses ip addresses or uh, sorry uh, the disk related stuff okay so welcome to pfsense install rescue shell or recover so we're going to install so i'm just leaving it as it is and hit enter and then yeah here you can see it's auto zfs ufs manual or shell so whatever you are uh, feeling comfortable with you can go with that one so if you want to use all the space you can go with the ufs or you can do uh, manual this setup if you know how to create disk on uh, ubuntu server because you're going to need a swap as well and then um, a, a drive for boot as well so if you don't know anything just go with the zfs one and uh, it's actually a software rate but we're gonna skip that part we will just go with let's say rate zero so it's asking proceed with the installation zero disk select yes and then here you can see so the first one stripe that means raid zero there is no redundancy and then mirror is raid one and then it's raid 10 and it has different raid like raid one two and three so uh, in hardware raid it's it's a little bit different but as we have just one disk so i'm gonna do stripe if you guys have two disks and you want to do redundancy then you can use mirror okay okay and then here we have to select the drive like it's going to ask you to select the drives you want to and uh, save into raid so as i press a uh, space bar you can see the static is showing here so if you have two disks it's going to show you two disks and then okay and it's asking you like all the operating system ask it's going to destroy everything in the disk yes i'm okay with that because it's a new disk and hopefully it will not take that long because i have assigned more resources on this one okay so the installation process is started meanwhile what we can do we can uh set one of the interface of windows machine to get the ip address from this interface vmnet4 so let's go to i have two machines running let me go to this one you can see i have network connection here otherwise it shows a red or something and let me show you the ip address as well so you can see it's 10.0.0.1.0.8 so it's in 10 series and uh, other than that i can ping as well i go to command prompt ping 8.8.8.8 you can see i can ping this and also i can ping google.com you can see i can ping google and everything so that means my internet is working now i'm going to change the interface setting so already it's connected to the network bridge what i'm gonna do i'm gonna change this one to custom and get the ip from this network v net vm net 4 okay and as i click okay you're gonna notice internet on this machine will disconnect here you can see there is no internet why because i changed the interface now let's go back to pfsense and see What's going on with that one? 
I apologize my computer is acting a bit slower I have to buy a new computer but I'm still waiting payment from YouTube <laughs> well my channel is not yet monetized okay so it's almost 100% completed okay so installation of PS PF sense is completed <laughs> would you like to reboot uh, into install system now yes reboot or you can go to shell and uh, do the configuration whatever you want but I would like to reboot it at least one time so if there was any kind of error it won't boot otherwise you configure everything and then when you reboot it and you don't see anything it's a it's a bummer so better to like reboot it at least once <sighs> so boot multi-user yes it's already booting into that one okay you can see the pfsense logo in the shell also welcome to pfsense 272 so we are going to configure it uh, a few things i'm not going to configure it completely just a few things to access this one in the web browser and then hopefully you will know more how to do things in the web interface but for most of the people i have seen uh, they're not good in doing command line stuff but i love doing that okay so it's getting the ip address dns gateway monitor blah 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 so once it's done it's going to show me a few options to select with from number zero to nine i guess and then under those option we can select things like setting up ip address so we should have one ip address with 10.0.0.x whatever it is because i set uh van to dhcp and it's getting the ip address from my home router so you can see here 10.0.0.228 so that's the van address and the lan address is 192.168.1.1 so now we have two options either i select uh, ip uh, sorry set static ip address on windows 10 machine and access from this ip address or i can change the ip address let me show you both ways so let me set a static ip address here and i will show you hopefully i will be able to access this one so first let me show you we don't have any ip address you can see it's 169 that's a peep ip address so i'm going to go into settings and then here i'm going to set ip address with the range of 192.168.1. let's say 10 and then 192.168.1.1 which is the gateway and then i'm just leaving uh dns as it is okay and then close there should be no internet but we should be able to ping 192.168 sorry dot one dot one because that's the gateway address and that is actually uh the home page or the page for um router pfsense 192.168.1.1 uh let me see if i have chrome i have it I don't like edge okay 192.168.1.1 okay so you can see I am able to access this if you see this page that means you're uh, going to access that page but there is no SSL certificate so that's why it's showing this page okay so here you can see I am able to access this one and by default uh, the username is admin and the password is pfsense but I was about to show you another thing on this one. So I'm just going to go back and uh, in properties and I'm going to set this to obtain IP address from the DHCP server. And then we will set IP address how we want on PFSense firewall. Okay, so you can see from 0 to 16 there are so many things you can do uh, on this one but what i'm going to do i'm just going to change the ip address that option two and then we are going to change the ip on lan interface yes it says configure ipv4 address lan interface via dhcp no 
because we want to set IP address how we want. So I want this to be uh, 172.16.0.1 and then the subnet should be 16 which is going to be the B class IP and then it says for WAN enter the new LAN IP before upstream gateway address for LAN press enter so it's a LAN we're just going to press enter and do you want to configure IPv6 no and it says if uh, you want to set static IP address no and then do you want to enable DHCP uh, on the LAN server yes we do want to enable DHCP server because uh, we set the IP to get from DHCP on Windows 10 which is attached to this network and it's asking for the range so I'm going to set range 172.160.2 uh, because 1 is the gateway from 2 to 172.16.255.254 and then do you want to revert to HTTP as a web uh, configurator protocol so you saw uh, we had SSL error if you want to change this to at HTTP so it's not gonna ask you for SSL certificate but I'm gonna say no because we can uh, set SSL certificate in the future now you can see the IP address for web configurator is changed from 192 to 172.16.0.1 0 .0 I'm gonna go back to this machine and here you can see uh, I think it already have got the IP address from the HCP server let's go and see if it's getting the IP address no it's still uh, the IP getting the IP address from different network let me just do IP address release IP config slash release and then IP config slash renew So now you can see the IP address is 172.16.222.41 which is the IP address it's getting from uh, the firewall. You can see it here as well. Okay. So now let's go back to the Chrome page again. And let me show you. Here it is. So now the IP address is changed and you can access this firewall within the LAN network you cannot access it with with the WAN IP address like on my computer I cannot access this one until I change something so that's going to be in my next video so if you want to learn about how you can access PFSense firewall using the WAN address I'm going to make another video related to this topic you just need to click on the video above and then you will be redirected to that video thank you and i will see you in the next video bye bye